the De Havilland Aircraft Museum. Situated at Salisbury Hall, just outside St. Albans, it claims to be Britain's oldest aviation museum. This was the birthplace of the DH-98, better known as the Mosquito. Unsurprisingly, the collection revolves around its pièce de résistance, the prototype DH-98. Nicknamed the Wooden Wonder, as it was made mostly out of layered plywood, the Mosquito would vastly outperform the Air Ministry's requirements of the design. By 1938, a new war with Germany seemed imminent, so Geoffrey de Havilland's idea of making the plane out of wood rather than scarce aluminium alloys gained a lot of traction. None of the versions built had any defensive armament. To get out of trouble, the Mosquito relied on raw speed. Powered by two Rolls-Royce Merlin engines, it was among the fastest aircraft of the war with most variants reaching a top speed of over 400 miles an hour. The DH-98 was designed as a two-seater fighter bomber, but during the war it fulfilled a great many roles, thus paving the way for today's multi-role aircraft. The museum has not one, but three mosquitoes on the one roof. Experts in woodworking, the heavy land would also build gliders to carry troops across the channel. Now on to some other things the Havilland made, like this Hornet Moth. Designed originally as a trainer aircraft, it failed to win any government contracts, so it was sold on the civilian market instead. Here we have the only autogyro de Havilland ever made. It's a de Havilland fuselage mated to a Sierva rotor wing. Sierva being the man who invented the autogyro. This is a DH-88 Comet Racer replica. A wooden aircraft designed specifically to compete in an air race from England to Australia. It did it in 70 hours and 55 minutes, setting a new record. Here we have one of the most successful planes the Havilland ever made, the DH-82 Tiger Moth.
Between 1932 and 1959, the Tiger Moth was the RAF's primary trainer aircraft. All new pilots got their flying feet in one of these. Out of the war effort, a new type of propulsion system emerged, the jet engine. The DH-100 Vampire features an unconventional twin boom tail section, which makes it instantly recognizable. Powered by a single de Havilland Goblin turbine, the vampire would give the mosquito a serious run for its money. It enjoyed a relatively short service life in the RAF, yet it remains one of the most photogenic aircraft of the era. Jet technology would not go amiss in the civilian sector. In 1949 the DH-106 Comet would take to the skies, becoming the world's first jet airliner. Powered by four de Havilland Ghost engines, it would on average halve travel times on most routes. Being the first, however, did have its drawbacks. New concepts like metal fatigue and airframe overstress would enter the world of aviation. After a number of spectacular crashes, the Comet fleet would be grounded and the Havilland's name forever tarnished. Competitors like Boeing would quickly learn how not to do things and emerge victorious in the market. While the Comet drama was playing out, the Havilland tried its hand at a new jet fighter, the Vixen. An evolution of the vampire design, the Vixen was larger and much faster, powered by two Rolls-Royce Avon turbojet engines. Adopted by the Royal Navy, it was duly rechristened as the Sea Vixen. But it was not to be. By the time the Sea Vixen entered service, the negative publicity generated by the comet's failings would bring forth the Havilland's ultimate fate. In 1960, it's merged into the Hawker Sidley Group, and by 1963, the de Havilland name is retired from all existing products and designs. An inglorious end to a once triumphant name.